I am the school teacher with Tourette's and OCD. I've had parents assume that I'm swearing at their kids, but that's just a lazy stereotype. I do suppress my tics around pretty much every adult. It is exhausting. It feels like I'm going to explode. My two kids respond to my tics differently. When they got worse, it was definitely an adjustment. She sometimes slaps herself or if I'm yeah. talking and she like whistles, I get a little annoyed, but I try my best to like ignore it. My name is Colleen Montez and I'm a teacher in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Can you work with him and I will work with him? I teach at an elementary school. I teach special education and the students are typically high functioning, but they have very severe behaviors. When I first went into teaching, I did not have severe tics yet. I'm gonna give you seven blocks because that's what you have. But you need to see if you have enough blocks, okay? Or if you have to regroup. The level of stress that I was under um, during COVID and it being my first year teaching set my ticks off. And at that point, that's where my Tourette's really kicked in. Six, seven. I obviously went to a doctor to see what was going on. And then they diagnosed me a year later with Tourette's syndrome. I do get frustrated with my tics when I'm teaching, when it's a student who picks up behaviors. For example, I hit the desk and then the student with the repeating behaviors also hit the desk and I have to explain, no, you don't do that. That's just my involuntary movements. <laughs> you have nine? Yes, good. It is exhausting to suppress my tics. It feels like I'm going to explode. They're not painful when I suppress them, they're exhausting, but when they come out, they are usually painful. Some parents, when I first told them that I had Tourette's, their initial question was, do you cuss? And I just let them know that I do not have what is called coprolalia. It's actually very rare in people with Tourette's, but also if I did have it, we would have to deal with it. I definitely think all of the students who are aware that I'm neurodivergent, it really helps them relate to me because they struggle to cope in life. And seeing that I also struggle, that I'm also able to be successful, that helps them to be like, oh, okay, I can do this too. Hello. My husband and I have been married for four years, um, but we've been together for seven years. You want me to get the pan or do you want? Yeah, please. Okay. I'll get the, Getting the fruits. fruits. When we first started dating, I let him know that I have these habits that I thought they were, <laughs> but a few years later, they got really bad and we just had to navigate that together. Yeah. There's just instances where you show them like hit herself or you know she had one where she would dig her elbow into her leg and so in those situations it was tough to watch because i knew it was painful he's very supportive of me can you, can you give me a knife please my ocd affects my tourette's in a way that i can't tick just one time i have to do it until it feels just right and usually that's four times if it's a painful tick, can't hit myself one time, I gotta do it four times. And that is pretty much every tick that I have all day, every day. Cut one? Uh huh. Sure, be careful though. My two kids respond to my ticks differently. My older one, Gavin, he grew up without me having ticks. Good job. So when they got worse, it was definitely an adjustment for him. Gavin, it used to be like he constantly would ask me to stop making noises, but now he's more accepting. Look, I have a robot. My younger child, Gracie, she has grown up with me having tics, so she doesn't even understand that I do things differently. Gavin, do you think your mom is different from your friend's mom? 
Um, yeah, because she has tics. She sometimes slaps herself or whistles. I feel like that hopefully it doesn't hurt when she like slaps herself. And sometimes I get a little annoyed, like if I'm talking and she like whistles, I get a little annoyed, but I try my best to like ignore it. I definitely worry that people are going to think that I'm not a good mom because I have Tourette's. What do you hope to teach your kids about being different from others? That it's okay to be different and they are different. We're all neurodivergent. Um, they both have ADHD so they know that they are different and their brains work differently and that's okay. <laughs> We're gonna make Gracie's lunch today. No. I post Tourette's and OCD awareness on my TikTok. So, I can't move my neck today. I can't release my tics the way I need to because of the excruciating pain in my neck from ticking in the first place. I definitely got negative comments that just said I was faking or I just wanted attention. And it really got to me at first and I did post like proof of my diagnosis. I was like, I'm not faking, look. Now everyone is pretty nice and supportive. <laughs> okay. Sit down. I think he has to pee. The thing that I'm most proud of in my life is probably the way that I'm raising my kids to be super knowledgeable and inclusive of everyone who is different. Sorry, that was not too good. And also I get to teach that to my students as well. I'm extremely proud of her. It's, it, it takes a lot to come out of your shell. So for her to go on, on TikTok and share her story and what she has to deal with every day I think is, is huge for her. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be neurodivergent. It doesn't make us any less. To a young person with Tourette's or OCD, I would say there's also ways to cope. You'll be okay. I'm okay, you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> 